How you doing everyone? Welcome back to NRL Fantasy Analysis. In this video, we're going to be jumping in to the NRL Fantasy browser site, the one without the really bad ad that's covering the um, the app screen. Um, has anyone seen that yet? Has anyone re-downloaded the app? I'm hoping that they fix that because it's not very good at this stage, but try not to panic too much, guys. It's a long way out from the season. They've obviously just brought out the app, um, but we'll, we'll work that out as we go along with it. But yeah, in this video, I'm actually going to go through and make a complete team uh, from scratch, just, just going through position by position, giving some tips along the way, and I hope this helps you know, all of you guys when, when you're making your size. Just you know, just listening to what I'm saying when I'm when I'm going through different positions and different price points and stuff like that, and what I'm looking for when going through a side. So we will start up, up up at the top in the hooker position. Just wanted to explain a few things around pricing first. So we're we're gonna look at how the price is determined, and this year it has changed a little bit. They've brought down the salary cap, which means they've brought down everyone's um, total cost as well. So everyone's price is a lot lower than it was last year. And I'll explain a little bit further. So the price of the year, the value is determined by it's approximately 12 and a half K per point. So an easy example, if you look at someone like Ruben Cotter, who's priced at 500 K, he is sitting at a 40 average, or he's priced for a 40 average. So if you can see that here, we go up as, as we go along, it's 125 K, obviously no one's priced at that, but that's how it's worked out, it will be a 10 point average. 250 would be 20, 375, we've gone up 125 each time for those playing along at home. 30 point average for that, 500K would be 40, 625 for 50, 750 for 60, and onwards and upwards. So if we look at some of the guys last year, we're looking at uh, guys with a, a 50 point average, we're sitting in around that 670, 680K range. So everyone's, you know, as we're going up along the, the points here and the price points, people are sitting around 60, you know, 50 to 70K. Uh, less than where they were last year. So when everyone's saying, oh, oh my God, everyone's everyone's super expensive, what do I do? Just remember that everyone's gone down along with the salary cap. It's always difficult to make a team at the start of the season. Very much different to how Supercoach is set up with you know a lot more a lot more money uh, involved at the start. So you can you can start with two complete gun wing fullbacks. You know a lot of time two complete gun halves and, and even a good sec uh, center or so. Um, so you'll definitely get at least one to two guns in every position, but that's not usually the case in Android Fantasy. You're probably seeing if you're if you're putting together a team and, you're, and you've got a trying to put Cleary and Shabovich in, it's very very difficult to get even half a decent side around that. You're heavily relying on two players, and that's not going to be too ideal. But again, we'll speak about that as we go through this video. Um, yeah, so when I'm going to be talking through different players. In, in this video and, and in this you know, putting together this team, we're looking to get around 10 points of value. And the reason that we say 10 points as a minimum is that it's going to be an increase of 125K. You know, across the season, we're looking to build our team value. So we started that 9.4, uh, yeah, 9.4 up in the top left corner there. And we're looking to get our team somewhere close to, you know, somewhere between 13 and a half to 15 million, like 15 million at a high range uh, for those that are going to be in the top sort of 100 or so. Um, and anywhere over 13 million for someone who's going to have a decent side in the top 1,000, 1,500. Okay, so think about that as we're going along. You do obviously get to start with 21 players, uh, so that's very helpful in terms of being able to pick some guys that are going to create some value. There's also going to be some guy, there's some guns in your team that you won't be trading out, so you're not going to realise any of the value that they that they bring up. But let's just say you you know, you brought you brought in 10 different guys that had 10 points of value. Okay. You know, you, there's there's over a million. You know, you're looking at one two fifty there, which gets us up to ten point six. And then you have you know the thirty six trades um, as we go along the season to be able to build some of that value to then be able to create your guns at the end of the year. So that's what we're, we're talking about there, is as in you know the importance of getting around that ten points of value and that hundred twenty five k. Because there are going to be a lot of a lot of players that you bring in that unfortunately are dud. You know, we're seeing you know you're going to bring a few at the start. We all will one or two that minimum that uh, that don't play very well even if you even if you have a really strong starting side you'll have to trade out there'll be a lot of injuries there'll be COVID dramas so you know every trade is going to be really important and every starting player that you bring in that uh, provides you value in that 10 points is going to be really important also the ones that you don't pick up the ones that you that you pick up that don't go so well is also going to cause you a lot of issues across the season so let's start with the talker position so you can click that there you can go over to the side more filters if you want to Separated there by position, um, you can obviously go by price and everything like that as well. But we start with the hookers, and <clears throat> it's a fairly tough position. It's probably the, uh, probably definitely to me anyway the toughest position to select this year. You've got Brayley who's out, 
Harry Grant has the red dot, guys, um, along with uh, Brandon Smith, who are both out for the first game. So suspension-related uh, things for these guys. Same with Munster as well. So what we can do, if you're someone that likes, you know, Reed Marnie, you're an Eels fan, he's you know the highest pri highest average hooker, then he's someone that's easy to select. There's some other option we'll talk about. Obviously, Damian Cook, he's just going to be rock solid up there. Harry Grant, who comes in a little bit cheaper and probably has the most upside out of everyone in this list. So he's someone that I'm very interested in, but the worry with him is you don't get to play him in round one. But what's the value of, of a trade? We say that is it's very high, the value of a trade. And if you're looking to get him in your side and you think he's going to average over 60, then he might be smart to pop in that side. Anyway, there's a few other options. We obviously have someone like Ruben Cotter coming into that 500k mark who has a little bit of value in that dual position as well, mid and the hooker. Average 43, price price of 30, should be should hopefully be getting a few more minutes for the Cowboys this year in that 13 role. So he's someone that you could plug in at a cheaper price point if you're looking that, at that as well. Aaron Clark is also someone who uh, has just been confirmed to have the nine jersey and it looks like you'd have a Tanner Boyd or something on the bench. So 20 to 30 minutes you'd expect for Tanner and maybe 50 to 60 for Aaron. The thing with, uh, the thing with him is if you actually look at his stats, he hasn't scored too well like as an overall basis in his sort of 60 plus, you know, 50 to 70, even, you know, he's got one good 80 minute score, but he won't get, he shouldn't be getting that unless there's injuries to all the other hookers. So for him, I don't see the, the 10 points in value, maybe five points, but not enough at this stage. You've got, got guys like Kobe Hetherington, but his roles, you know, we're not sure what he's going to be playing at this point. And it looks like Randall should be getting a start. And you see his 31.6 average there and at his 350k price. You're looking at him being, if we go back to our tally there, 350. He's you know priced around that between 27 and 28, which we see a lot of those uh, wing fullbacks and centers priced at. So is there going to be like is there going to be 10 points of value for him? Do we see him playing 60 minutes? And if we do, then we he should be able to get that minimum 10 points of value. You know, 60 minutes at a point per minute of like 0 0.6 and a half, 0 0.7 is really really easy to do. Well. I say easy. Should is very he's very capable of achieving that. He's had a game with over seventy tackles, for example. So he's someone that's definitely interesting and might be someone that we just pop in um, as a as a guy that we can play off our interchange bench to start. But with things not being too sure, with the you know obviously Grant not playing round one, I then would select between Reed Mane and Damian Cook. I think it's important to have a gun in each position at this stage of the season. So let's go with Reed just for the fact that you know he did really well at the start of last season. Let's pretend I'm an Eels fan. So we're going to pick, we're going to start with Reed, And then we're also going to pop in Chris Randall as well. So you get two guys from the hooking position. And we're going to play around with this as we go anyway, uh, along the way. Okay, let's just go really simple in our mids and select a gun. I personally, out of the top guns in this position, I like Payne Haas and I like Cam McKinnis. So you're getting guys that are at the top of their field. Uh, you're going to be getting around that 60 point average or above. Uh, which is going to be really helpful. If you have that one guy in each of the positions that is the best in their position, i.e. Reed, it could be a Grant, it could be a Cook, but they're very close, Haas, McInnes, etc., etc. Et so let's be simple. Let's go for Payne Haas as our number one option. I just see him, you know, he's going to be a gun for many years to come. Nothing's really going to change with his minutes or anything like that. He's just going to become better as a player. The team's going to be better. So I, know, I see no reason why he'd go down. And every reason why it at least stay the same. And if you um, happen to have a suspension or something to one of your top players, whether it's a Cleary or whatever you decide to pick, then Payne Haas could be a nice captaincy option as well. So that's that. Okay, let's go through. Just let's just go through each position, and go through the guns to start us off, because these are a lot, uh, a lot bigger and a lot uh, you know, harder to dissect. In terms of our edge position, very very interesting this year. If you're looking at our top guys, Feed is going to lose a lot of points through the tackle breaks. He may gain a few through the offloads, but he's more of a you know, pin the ball under the under the arm and 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 break through and try and score. So for him, he's going to be losing sort of you know, at least around that six points. Um, if we dive in a little bit deeper, we'll be able to see exactly. But around that six to seven uh, points in tackle breaks each game. Papali e had some really really high scores in eighty minute rolls, and it looks like he's going to play a bit more edge. So I don't, uh, I don't see him. Sorry, middle. So I don't see him being a, a viable option at this stage of the season. Guys like Jackson are solid, but you know that was an outlier year for him. Will he continue that in a team that's a little bit better? Maybe not. Crichton was okay last year. I don't think, like personally owning him last year, I don't think I'd like to select him again. When we keep moving along. Someone like Ryan Madison and, and Curran are really interesting players to me, along with um, Tavita Pangai. 
I think for Pangai, he, he gets the most benefit out of this. He obviously was a tackle buster as well, but he also offloaded, offloaded two and a half times a game. So very similar to that of uh, Christian Welch in terms of um, their ability to offload it. So he becomes interesting in that dual position, and he should see a lot more minutes than he did uh, the, years, the you know, years previous in terms of you know, spending a lot more time on the bench and stuff. He should have this uh, edge position locked up at the dog. So for me, I, in, in, out of these three guys, it's probably a pang guy and then a current at the start of the season because of the dual position. But I think Madison will probably score better overall unless current you know manages to keep manages to keep manages to keep his position. Um, so that's that one there. If if we have a bit of extra money later, then one of those one of those two guys could be decent as well. But I can see these guys obviously being keepers in that in that lower fifties currently. Uh, yeah, sort of your low end keeper when you've got guys that are. Uh, in the 60s, but they have the potential to be a mid to high 50s kind of player. So keep that in mind when you're selecting a edge player like these guys. All right, so there's one. Let's keep keep moving along. Uh, pretty obvious that you should be going Cleary. He has a 93 average. He's going to lose just over 10 points uh, in value with you know his his uh, kicking in general play. Uh, he should gain a little bit in offloads, but yeah. If we're looking at these types of guys here, someone like Cherry Evans is going to lose some value as well. When you've clearly got the best option in a position. He then gets to double his points by captaincy. I feel like you know just spending that extra couple hundred k is is a no brainer. So you know if, if that doesn't exactly make sense to you, just just go back and listen to that again. Would be ideal. But yeah, you're wanting your captain to be, you know, if he if he's the best player in his position, awesome. He's the best player in the game by a long way. Then you have to plug him in and, and play him as captain. It's very very simple for that one. Okay, centers. This becomes very, very interesting. There's a lot of guys that I'm very much interested in in this, in this one here, and all for different reasons. So Burton is one of them, being he's going to be playing in the halves. There's some talk that he's going to be a little bit more of a running half. We'll see in the trials how that pans out. So he's going to be a decent option at 593 anyway. I see a little bit of value for him. I see him averaging over, you know, I see him averaging over 50. So a little bit of value. You get him at, at a keeper, as a keeper in the half, in the centers anyway. So don't worry with these types of guys like Burton if he's only got maybe five points of value because he's already at the top uh, average in the center position. So keep that in mind when you're picking these guys as well, is that if they have a tiny bit of value and then at the top of their position, they're just an, almost an automatic buy anyway. But I also do see a couple other guys that have some value uh, as well. And we'll find them in a moment with you and Aiken who has that dual position as well, edge in the center. You see that dual position with Burton, half and center as well. So you can move them around. This can be really important in a COVID year as well. But Aiken moving to uh, their second row where he played uh, through the back end of last year. This this 43 average includes a lot of games in the centers as well. And when he moved to the back row, he was you know, averaging pretty much 10 pretty much 10 points of value above where he's at currently. So at 540k, and he's someone that you can get in the centers, I think is a no-brainer as well. Jackie Bird is going to be moving into the lock position, it seems. They have a fair few younger options in the centers, and you know, he's, being a ball playing, uh, he's played six in the past. Really, really strong, um, you know, center. He can move, he can roam around the field a little bit and be that link between you know the halves and the outside back. So, for Bird, I feel like him, you know, as well. He spent a fair bit of time on the edge at the end of last season. Again, averaged over fifty as well. So another player with a fair bit of value. We're going to start with you and Aiken though. Good chance I come back and select another one of these guys, whether it be in the edge or the centers. Um, but that's just a, a, you know, a couple of interesting options there. We'll move to the wing fullbacks now. And for me, there's some obviously some interesting ones. Javojevic is going to have to play out of this world again just to maintain that average. Obviously, he's going to lose a bunch in the tackle breaks as well. I just don't see him getting there, and, and I see his price dropping down a bit, and we'll pick him up at some point in the season, probably in the back end for him. Toll is going to move, uh, uh, leave a lot of... Sorry, he's going to miss out on a lot of tackle busts as well. Uh, so his 59 average was out of this world with the 250 meters gained. I don't see that happening again. He'll still be a gun, but I don't think he's under, uh, I don't think he's valued correctly at this point. Tedesco as well, 695 at 58 average, solid. You know, you can pick him up if you like. But there's also some, some I wouldn't say better guys, but better valued guys that could average similar, a little bit lower. And we'll start with someone like Pappenhausen. Obviously, average 50.9 last year. That includes a lot of games off the bench, and he's averaging over 50, 70 for the first part of the season. He's got the goal kicking, so a lot of really good signs there for someone like Pap to do a lot of good things and average more than he's currently at and get up in those 700k range. So a keeper, 
in that wing full acquisition, you know, based on averages, there is a top what eight or nine <coughs> wing fullback, and that includes a lot of games off the bench last year. So, to me, a bit of a no brainer in terms of value. That is, you know, pretty close to 10, 10 points in value if we're, you know, even discounting him from that seventy last year. Gets the goal kicking. Um, go from there. Two other guys here, interesting ones: Nico Hines moving to the Sharks, and also Ponga. I'd see a little bit of value in them. Uh, probably slightly not as much as Pat. Both probably about five points undervalued, uh, with Nico being able to play in such a, a more dominant role. For the Sharks, will just be interesting to see how, how they play him in, in the in the trial games, for sure, uh, and then we can make a better decision on him from there. Okay, we'll talk about the... we we'll talk about that. Actually, just go through the centres. This is actually a ridiculous amount. Um, a ridiculous amount of cheaper centres at that, at that nice 350k price point. So for this one, just yeah, just pick the guys that you're very much interested in. I've seen a lot of people interested in Rocco Berry. Yeah, you know, you've got him at a 28, uh, your price of 28 center and wing fullback, young fella, has some pedigree with his, you know, I think he's old man as well. Played played Union if I'm if I'm correct, from what I've from what I've looked at. Um, is he able to average 37 or 38? Look, I think there's a decent chance. It looks like his defense is really solid. Uh, Warriors team's going to be okay, so he should be able to score a bunch of tries, nothing out of this world, like you would be in a Storm outfit or a, or a Bunnies or something like that, or, or Panthers, which we'll talk about in a second, but he definitely has some value, and if you like him as a player and, and you're excited to see him progress, you know, being in his second year, then he's someone that's interesting to pick up, and I'm, I'm quite happy to select him there. When we've got a lot of different centers, we've got Penasini here, we've got Crichton, we've got Tago, um, could be the other young fella, uh, May as well, uh, who could play. Billy Smith, we've got a bunch of different guys here. So I'd probably select one of the two of these guys in the wing fullbacks just to make it a little bit easier. So if we just went for a Crichton, for example, who you know he's got a 36 average there, he's priced down in the 28, uh, 27s, the 28s. So for me, at least a 10, at least 10 points of value. He's he showed that he can score really well in the centers. His third year, he should be improving. Um, so Crichton's gonna make our spot in the wing fullbacks as well. Okay, now we have to move into the interchange for our centers. I think it's smart to have another another bit of cover in that cheaper range for our center slash wing fullback, and it's probably an easy one to pop in, you know, a Tago or a Penasini, depending on how excited you are at these types of guys. We're not sure who's going to make it out of those couple, um, whether it's Tago and May in um, in the in the in the Panthers outfit on that on that one center role. So we can maybe wait on one of them if we like. Um, if you're interested in Penasini, again, 33.7 average, played really well as a young fella at the back end of the year, so he's someone that might be interesting to select. Interesting, uh, I mean, everyone now. Cool, that's why it took a long time to scroll. So Penasini's in there. We'll come back to the bench in a little bit. I reckon we can select one more of the, the dual position guys, whether it be um, a Jack Bird or an Aitken, uh, sorry, a Jack Bird or a, or a Burton or something like that. So then we're, gonna, again, we're looking at the moment as a... a Big bunch of um, dual position guys already in that centers. Obviously got one in the wing fullbacks now. We've got one in the mid edge. So it'd be nice to have another one in the edge position. I see really cool to be able to interchange like a Jack Bird and a Naked, depending on um, how you need to play the game. If one of them gets injured, something like that, I think is a is a cool thing to be able to have up your sleeve. So let's, let's just roll with Jack Bird. Also get him at a cheaper price. He's probably gonna be a keeper in the centers. We can upgrade our mids and our edges that little bit later. Okay, that's that there. Let's go for another half. There's obviously plenty of action in the halves position as well. You can scroll down the list a little bit again, just looking for guys with a bit of value. And I see Reynolds having a touch of value there. Price at 50, uh, sorry, average of 51.8. And if we go to 613K, what's he gonna be priced at? Uh, just under a 50 point average. So there's a couple of points of straight up value there for Reynolds. Um, he'll have to do more, he'll have to play more of a role. Up there, the only issue is he loses a bunch of his kicking uh, points in there. So he's someone that's a decent option. You got Sexton, who just went nuclear at the back end of last year against you know three to four pretty easy sides. You got Nico Hines as an option. Burton's there, but for me, I think we can play. We can probably play a cheaper half um, at this point of the year. So we've got like blokes like Ilias, who can be solid. We have got Kurt Mann, who's in at the half position now. He's gonna be playing that roving role through the middle. As well, 470k. We're sitting that at what a 30, 37 average, um, basing off that 500k being a 40. 
Uh, so again, a couple of points of value. He's played a lot of he played a lot of games out in the centres and stuff last year. So through the middle, if he can get anywhere around that sixty minutes, I can see a point eight or so um, point, points per minute for him. So that's getting him anywhere close to a forty eight to fifty average and, and ten points of value. So for man, I think is a solid option, and we can pick up one of the cheaper guys as well. Again, not exactly sure who's going to be playing at this point, but whether it's an Ilias or a Tarf, I think um, they're all going to be solid options there. If we can pick Ilias up, um, we got Amone, who I really like at the Dragons. I think we're just going to pop him in, um, you know, whether it's going to be him, whether it's going to be um, Tago, someone like that. We're going to have one of those guys on the bench. So let's just go with Amone now, who's a good chance of getting the center position and has a bit, um, has a bit of flair. Like, I think he's a really good player. So that's that there. Okay, we'll leave the halves at that point and we'll move back to the mid. So we have Payne Haas at the moment. We've got Payne Guy in our edge position as someone really strong. Let's check where we're at money-wise. So 1.8 mil left for seven positions. So we're looking at only 200. <laughs> Not enough, do we? So <coughs> that's where it makes it a little bit tougher, right? We then have to change on the run. So in this position, someone like Gee, even even Pango might have to go, or or a Payne Haas, for example. It does make it hard, and this is where we talk about that. This at this point of the season, it's not easy to to pick up absolute superstars in in certain positions. So, and especially when it when when the edge position is is tough to fill certain um certain really good players, and someone like Jack Bird might not be able to be there. We'll we'll pop Aiken up there as well, in our edge position. All right, and what we can do is just actually search, make it easy for us. Eight in there. Cool. We'll pop him in the edge, and we'll and we'll just play one of the cheaper guys in the centers at this point, just because there's so much value there. There's no, there's no real reason why we can't do that. And let's just pop Tago in at this stage. Okay, that's gonna help us out a little bit. All right, a bit over two million now. Obviously, we're gonna have, probably have a couple of you know 250k guys in this emergencies, but we're gonna need a little bit more for um, our starting side. So. Mid position. Let's try again. All right. So, what do we want here? We have to, obviously have to spend a little bit less. Is there any value in this position? I'd just be scrolling through. What can we do at this price point? We got Ruben Cotter there, who we might end up having to use in our hooker position instead of Reed. Just being at that 780k might be a little bit much for us at this point of the season, especially. Tommy Gilbert's going to be a half an interesting option. Does he have 10 points of value? I'm not sure. He could average somewhere maybe around the 40 mark, <coughs> which would only give him 40 to 50k in value. Moving along the line, not too much at this stage, obviously. Sorry, I'm moving quickly just because uh, I have actually done some research, which I hope you guys do as well. Obviously, if you're watching my videos, it's a good amount of research. But you know, doing doing a bit of your own, even just scrolling through these guys and just going, oh, that guy's interesting. His average is a little bit higher than than what he's priced at. Oh, this Neem guy. Let's have a look at him. From the Cowboys, will he get some game time? Approximately, is he in projected lineups? Things like that I'd be looking at uh, with those types of guys. Kobe Hetherington's there, and then you look at guys like Penne, um, Spencer Lanyu. I can't believe he's still 320k. Um, and then you're, you're moving down the list, and then you're getting to guys like Tepe Maroa, um, etc., etc. 240k. So the mid position is really, really interesting. Yeah, you know, coming into this season, so it might be one where you go, "Ooh, do I do I spend up that little bit more?" In our mids and get a couple of guns and that and that might be a solid option. So let's let's move someone like Pango up into uh, the mids. I think we're going to have to move Reed Money. So obviously, I'm sure you guys have had a go at making your team and, and showed that it's not easy just to to pick up a, a really good side straight away. It's going to take a fair bit of work to get to exactly what you what you wish there. Okay, we've already got Aiken up there. We've got our centers. We don't have any other jewel in that edge position. Boarding undo in our hooker position. Okay, so we can't go for Reed. There's, look, we can go for Harry Grant, but that would mean that would mean we're playing a Randall. So at this point, just to try and get a little bit of balance across our side, we're gonna hit. With, we're gonna hit with Ruben Cotter, and, and with that jewel position, gives us a fair bit of help there as well. In our hookers in mid, if we wanted to, we could play Randall in the hooking position to start. And, and play Cotter in our mids, so that's something that is interesting. But now we've got a fair bit of cash in that mid position. Oops, as well. Okay, so edge, 
what are we going to find there and how much cash have we got left we're looking at 2.36 for seven players so a bit over 300k a player cool well how about we make this a little bit easier for our brains right now and go for some cheapies that are a chance of playing okay so the 240k guys obviously got the young fella from uh, there's a decent chance that Tepo Moroa plays at 240k. Is he going to do anything? Ugh, who knows? Something's going to come up, guys. So you got Metcalf in there that could come in for uh, if, if there's some injuries and stuff like that. We have Andrew Davey. It would be nice to jump in and get him a, a game or two to make us some cash. Um, and then you've got some other guys. We've got Isaiah Tass at 220k. So obviously that's going to help us out a bit. If he gets the center position, everyone's going to have him. Cool. We pop him in at 220k. That helps us. Okay, everyone's talking about that um, Mowali from, from Rabbitohs, and we don't think he's going to get a spot, obviously, in a bit of a jam-packed squad. But let's just say there's a 240k player, um, and we're only going to pick up two of these guys, two, two 240k players uh, to, to round out this squad so far, and uh, whether we say Tepai, let's just go with the Tepai, but someone at this level uh, will be able to come up at any stage. Cool. So Tepai, we're probably going to need someone a little bit better in our mid position. Okay, let's filter this out. I'm going to have to get a slightly better mid. All right. So again, if you're following along at home, this is kind of how it's going to work when you're making your own teams. Um, and just pop into the back to the word document again. When we're talking about some, you know, finding guys with value, if there's a lot of value in a certain position, it's probably smart to just use that. I know I've spoken about like trying to get a gun in each position, but in cases like this where you know the mids, the hookers, um, a little bit in the in, in the wing fullbacks as well, there's, there's, it's tough to find uh, some guys with um, a, little, a fair lot of value. Uh, sorry, yeah, a lot of a lot of value, or even just getting guns that you want in your side. So it's probably I feel like it could be smarter sometimes to get if you can fill up a whole spot with with some value guys, whether it be mid rangers or cheapies, then you can spend up a little bit higher to get the right gun that you need in a certain position. So that's something to to think about as well. All right, so the mids and a higher price, kill. Cool. All right, what else have we got here? So scrolling along, anyone looking at Tamalolo, will he get back to his you know gun ways? I'm not sure. That price is just a bit annoying <coughs> at that 620. Okay, moving along, someone we haven't talked about, Stefano. We rolled past him at that at that mid price. He's going to be worth bringing to our side. I can see probably 10 points of value for him, so we can come in there. If there's anyone else, then we can move down a, a, a Pango Jr., or we might have to downgrade him to a Bird, for example, if we can't pick up a really good squad member here. But then, you know, this is when guys like Gilbert come into play if you need to you know, spend that a little bit less, um, for example. And at this stage, we're obviously looking at some cover as well on the bench. So we've got hooker cover, center, obviously half there. You know, a few centers already uh, in that one. And we've got some mid cover. All right. That's good so far. So we're only missing, what, wing fullback cover, which we kind of have in, in Crichton and, and Berry. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, cool. Let's go with that. All right. So, yeah, obviously finding it fairly hard here to, to pick up certain guys in that mid-range position. So at this point, we might have to leave the mids where they are. Unless we're going for a, for a top gun again. I can't see us picking up any of these guys in the middle of the pack. Cool, let's move on. In terms of our edge, what have we got here? Again, one, two, three, four players for 1.3. So we're looking at 440 a player, which is okay, I suppose. Um, but when we're looking at these sorts of players, 440, can we get someone... Like a bird, if we tr we chuck him in there, let's see what we can do. Cool, now we've got plenty of cover in our edge and the center. We then need a wing fullback to pick. And there's a few guys that are at a slightly cheaper price than that 400s. You've got someone like Hamiso, which a few people are projecting him to be a high 40s player and wing fullback. I'd, I'm a bit worried, if I'm honest, with, with him. Just Yes, he's a solid player and he's going to be in his third year. Third year? Um, 30 now and my issue with him is just he's in a roster that's not very good so that's the worry with him someone like Nickel Klukstar he is priced at 437 which is you know sitting pretty low in that mid 30s there he's someone that has scored in the mid 40s as well so there's probably 10 points of value in there he's going to be playing in a team that's going to be 
okay, which is probably the main worry. They're not going to be as good as when he was playing his best, you know, in that in those runs to the finals. So that's something to think about with him. And then if you're looking that little bit cheaper, you got guys like Sawali. Xavier Savage will be cool, but he's he's racing the clock to get back. We got Taff. Um, Charlie Stange, 298. I can't believe he had average 23 last year. Same with Cody Ramsey. Guys that really, you know, shows a fair bit of promise coming into the uh, coming into last year, and and they uh, just haven't gone so well. Actually, the other one to think about instead of Morea was um someone like Jackson Howarth at 220k. I'm gonna pop him in instead of um instead of Tepai. So we'll piss off Tepai. Thanks for trying, mate. In terms of having fullbacks, this could, it's going to change as we go. So no point spending too much time selecting these guys. But at 400 odd thousand, we could go for Nickel Cookstar. Let's just throw him in there as a safety. And then we got two to pick from at 391k. That doesn't help us. Beautiful. All right. So how hard this is, guys. Really. Yeah, we look at this now. We're probably going to have to downgrade a Haas or a Pango Jr. Easiest one might be Haas at 782k. Where to from here? That's the question. Who are we going to pick up on our emergencies? And then, you know, look, we're looking at this team and, and where are the real cheapy guys that we can get in over some of the big dogs? Okay, mids. Let's make it tough on ourselves. All right. Who else have we got in the mid range? That's some value. Again, we've been through this for Nukin. Yeah, it might end up being a Tommy Gilbert. We might end up having to pick a Helam Luki, for example, or a Nainai. All right, let's go with let's go with Nainai just to make it look okay here. Three hundred fifty k, decent chance of getting some big minutes in the pack for the Cowboys. That's cool. All right, mids there. All right, who can we pick? Curran at six seventy might be half okay. We spoke about. Him and guys like Madison as well. Oops, let's get money. Um, Lolo. Welch, 5, 5.88. Maybe provide some value for us. We can get him at over a 50 average um, and play him up until the, let's say the Christmas break, up until Origin, for example. That could be a decent one there at that cheaper price. Cool. If we did that, let's just play. And then we have 235k. So we would get another cheapie in there. Um, at this stage, it looks like the majority of these guys are going to play. If we weren't able to get someone at that 300, at that 230k, which obviously we can at this point, let's scroll it down. We can get another 220k guy, but again, there's a good chance that a lot of these guys aren't going to play, so we'd probably have to downgrade somewhere else. And it definitely makes it hard, doesn't it? You know, it might be Bird has to get downgraded to Halem Lukey. Tommy Gilbert, that type of player, just so we can get a sort of a 350k player on that side there. Maybe Welch has to go down to Gilbert. You know, these are all things that we can do if we wanted to, just to pop in another 350k guy. But that that would actually be pretty fair, this type of team, uh, as to who's going to be playing. There's one or two guys that we're not sure about at this point, but obviously other cheapies will come up. But I wouldn't be sitting there having sort of three... Four, yeah, probably three might be okay for 220k or 240k players. I don't think it's going to be very ideal at this point. We're obviously missing a proper gun hooker. We've got Cotter that might be able to do a job, but we might be missing out on sort of 10 points in a hooking position, and that's probably the good reason why you'd pick someone like Harry Grant. Mids, we've got plenty of good options that are going to average 50 plus, so we're really strong in that position, you know, in a position that's going to be very light on in, in, uh, in cheapies. So that's probably a smarter idea to pick those guys up there. We've got some guys on the edge here in Burden Aiken in that mid-range that <coughs> should be able to provide us some value. And then we can move them into the centers um, as keepers later when, uh, you know, Tago, Berry, these types of guys, unless they become uh, keepers themselves, uh, we can move them on to, after they've made a bit of cash um, and sort of upgrade in our edges there. We can move Pango down. We can do a few things with that uh, middle and edge position there. Cool, we got Cleary, and we've also got Kurt Mann, who's a little bit undervalued. Cleary is our captaincy option. Great. In terms of our centers, we obviously don't have any high price guys, but we, we have them up here in Bird and Aiken just playing a different role, just because I see a fair bit of value in that center position. So smart to have a couple of guys, whether it's Penasini, um, whether it's Tass, whoever it's going to be, to cover that. I think that's pretty good at this point. And then we've got in the wing fullbacks. We've got Pappenhausen as our gun. 
And then we got Stephen Crichton uh, and also Nickel Cookstar, who can average that mid 40s, and Crichton hopefully somewhere in the mid to high 30s, um, and do a job. So overall, solid with a bunch of different cash cows uh, covering all the different positions on our interchange. We're just probably needing a wing fullback here in that position. I think we'll be pretty well covered. So. That's how you make a team, guys. That's just the general idea at this point. It's obviously super early. We're at the back end of, of January. There's 40 days until the first game. Just keep that in mind that we don't really know overall. Like We've got a good idea on certain, you know, a lot of the mid-range to, to high-level guns is what their roles are going to be. But a lot of the cheaper guys, we won't know until trials. Um, but that's that's going to be the best part to to actually see them um, and spot the different guys that you, know, you might have been interested in at this point of the season. There's going to be a bunch of guys that we had no idea were on the radar that are going to come up as well, uh, and they're going to be really cool to pop into your squad. So overall, that's how, that's how we do it, guys. I hope you learn a bit from just me scrolling through. Obviously, there was a little bit of mindless scrolling, but I just wanted to you know, get in there and show you actually how hard it is to actually make a team. Like, yes, I know what I'm talking about at this point. Um, done a little bit of study, obviously, but it's still very hard to just make a team in two seconds or you know, to do it uh, properly at this point when there's so many different options there's going to be. Um, but that's enough rambling for me for today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you took something out of it. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're new uh, or if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel. I really appreciate all you guys' support and we'll, uh, we'll continue popping out these videos uh, as we go along through February and into finally round one. All right, see you guys. Have a good day.